Good morning, everybody. This is Leah Murta. I'm coming at you as the guest host of the Synergy Cafe this morning. We're doing a little bit of a turnaround today, and I will be interviewing the founder and owner of the Synergy Cafe, Mr. Magic Brad Gudem. And we're going to talk a little bit this morning about some of his experience and some of his current projects. So I'm going to turn it over with a question to Brad. Brad, I'm a little curious. Um, in looking at your website, you have your fingers in a lot of different cookie jars and that's just so awesome and so i'm really curious is there any one or you know a few of those cookie jars that you are really excited about right now well i do have a lot of websites so it depends on which one you're looking at because i do have a lot because <laughs> i do my not only do i have my fingers in a lot of cookie jars i got my fingers in the universe all over the whole internet absolutely world but um what a main focus is for me now is the event world. And by that, I mean, like I produced some trade shows. My, I got my start as a magician and I produced this event planner expo. Mm -hmm. And then I believe that live events, whether they're expos or just socials or happy hours or whatever, is our ability to get off this internet thing and connect with real people again. Right, so, absolutely. So belly to belly is, the, is yeah. the new trend. It's like, it's a new trend, but it's, it's really kind of coming around full circle because that's all we used to do was in-person events, right? They had no choice. We didn't right, have the internet exactly. back then. Okay. Mm -hmm. If we were walking around with one of these things, talking to people, the people would go, what the hell is he doing? Yeah, or maybe ask you if you were from Star Trek or something like that. That's right. That is coming, <laughs> isn't it? Well, that's yeah, so, the thing, events. Okay, so tell us more about, um, about some upcoming expos that you have in, in the near or even not so near future. What's going on for you? Well, um, we're getting momentum going on a thing I'm calling Synergy First Thursdays. So the first Thursday of every month, we're doing a little happy hour social thing. So we're always looking for venues that want to host it and definitely people want to come to it. Okay. So that's, that's the most recent thing that's happening, the first Thursday of every month. Awesome. And then um, the Minnesota Event Planners Expo is March 4th. That's a command, March 4th. Right, absolutely. And then in October, there's the Minnesota Business Expo. So those are bigger productions. But there's and always new stuff that's happening. But personally, sure. what I've got going is the Synergy First Thursdays and then the two expos. So with the October event, um, have we missed that one or is it still coming up? It's coming up, 2020. Oh, in 2020. Okay. Yeah. So um great and so like what kind of people should come to those events either your first thursday event or your larger you know um expo events well the first thursday event is sort of scheduled around event professionals whether they be on the planning end of things or whether they're on the supplier end of things okay. so it includes caterers entertainers balloon decorators staging lighting anybody that's got something like that, or someone's a planner that plans weddings or special events. And then also there's people that just have a business that want to leverage a live event to market mm -hmm. their product, service, or cause. Okay. And then the next event, the big expo, is that sure. same audience. It's okay. for people in the events industry. And okay. then the business expo that's happening in October of 2020 is more of a horizontal market, where it's okay. everything from accountants to carpet cleaning to Oh, so a lot software. of different. Yeah, any yeah. type of business. It's a business to business show, but any kind of business resource, whether you need to get copy paper Excellent. or have a banner made or hire a programmer or whatever. Okay. And for the location of these larger events, um, where can we find you? Earl Brown Heritage Center in Brooklyn Center, Minnesota, which is basically 694 and Highway yeah. 100. Yeah, that's, um, that's a really convenient location, I think, for a lot of people in the Twin Cities metro. I know there's a lot of hotels there. If we have folks that are watching us from the greater Minnesota area or from outlying areas, if you want to come in, it's really convenient to stay. There's actually a hotel that's connected there with a Skyway so that if yeah. you want to get cold in the winter. Can... Well, especially in March up here, right? Yeah. You got you to gotta predict those things. Exactly. So um, is there a cost for people who are just coming in as attendees of this event? Obviously your vendors are gonna have a booth fee, but yep. for just people that are coming in to, um, to visit the vendors, do they, is there any kind of a ticket fee? Well, you know, there never has been. I've always kind of looked at it like you shouldn't have to pay to shop because that's why they're there. They're coming there to shop for resources. Sure. So yeah, it's kind of like you shouldn't have to pay a cover charge to shop. However, okay. 
I'm pondering putting some kind of price tag on it because these days of the internet, you got all those free meetups and everything. Yeah. And oftentimes mm -hmm. people, there's no, there's no commitment or skin in the game. Absolutely. So I'm pondering yeah, putting a little price tag on it so they got something invested to make them actually show up. Cause you know, you, you get a lot of people that just don't show, unfortunately. Yeah. They don't have yeah. to, you know, people are hiding behind the internet these days. Yeah, that totally makes sense. And of course, as a fellow business owner, I absolutely understand that. And then um, I'm also just curious, you know, you and I have talked a, li a little bit about uh, your gift as a connector. And there are some unique aspects to the, um, to the large scale events that you produce. And so I'm curious, what can you tell our audience what sets your event apart from a, another, like, like a home show or an RV sure. show or something that um, would be a conventional um, expo or sure. a vendor conference? Well, first, first off, between a home show or a, a recreational RV show or something, those are consumer shows where this okay. is more a business to business show. Sure. But the way that I've designed it is a little bit unique in that uh, we do have booths that are on the perimeter of the room. Okay. And then we've got tabletops on the interior so that when people walk in, they don't have to go through that pipe and drape rat maze. Yeah, the maze. Room. Right, exactly. It's uh -huh. open so you can see everybody. Okay. So that's one big aspect. When you come in, it's very inviting and you get to see a lot of people and you can look across sure. the room and, oh, there's Tammy. I haven't seen her for so long. I'm going to go. So it really Yeah, that's so fun. <laughs> and then another element is in our marketing, because with the internet, you can base, as soon as people commit, as far as an exhibitor, we start marketing for them. Okay. So as an example, last year, uh, USA Inflatables, they do the bouncy things for the kids. And yeah, stuff like that. sure. Popular their, event feature. A lot of mm -hmm. fun. They, it's, they do like fundraisers and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So part of his target market is churches because they do church okay. fundraisers. They blow these things up, put them in the parking lot or in the lawn or whatever. Right. We see those all the time yeah. in our community. So that's his market. That's who he wants to reach. <clears throat> so I, if I know that, I now do blog posts and things that USA Inflatables is going to be at the event expo. And I, I use Facebook to target churches or I'll go on to sure. a, a group. I'll find a group of churches and do a direct mail postcard to them. That way we've got the church event coordinators coming to the event. And when they see that blog post of USA Inflatables and it goes in their head, when they walk in the room yeah. and they see that open room of everybody and they see across the room, there's USA Inflatables. They take a beeline right over to that vendor and now there's a nat there's a match to what USA Inflatables is looking for. Absolutely. And USA Inflatables goes, oh my God, <laughs> of all the exact same people we're looking for. That's fantastic. What a unique approach to a conventional um a conventional convention. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Let them convene. Right? Yeah, let everybody convene. And so um like share with us, if you will, one of your favorite connection stories about a business that hooked up with, you know, their, their primary customer target and, you know, some of the value that both the shopper and the vendor received from being a part of your event. This isn't something that I've done. I'll, let me, I can give you something that I've done and I can give you something that. Uh, I, yeah, I'd love that. That, that, that another person did. So one of the things that we did is we worked with Featherlight Exhibits and they were having your traditional open house. Okay. But instead of just having them invite their past clients and new customers, mm -hmm. we created a collaborative of people that were complimentary and non-competitive. Oh, so we very had good. my friend Ron Eccles did a seminar on effective trade show marketing. So there's an educational aspect to it. And sure. Featherlight had this backlit uh, display they wanted to launch. Mm -hmm. So we brought in a photographer to take pictures and we brought in a caterer that did an edible floral display. So it was this bright, vibrant, oh, colorful delicious thing. <laughs> the photographer took a picture of that before the event. Then we made a postcard. So we had a printer print the postcards mm -hmm. and we mailed this was the invitation. So people got that vibrant color image in their head. When they walked in, they saw the photographer when we had a large oh, format yeah. graphic banner person and mm -hmm. then the display. And then we had a ad specialty company that had the imprinted stuff. And then we had okay. me as a magician that does trade show stuff. Right, absolutely. A, a robotic mannequin person that would hand out brochures and stuff. So we had all these non-competing but complimentary vendors at this open house event. And mm -hmm. we all collaboratively invited people. So it wasn't just Featherlight. And it wasn't just right. me and Featherlight. It was everybody said, hey, come one, come all. And yeah. they were all going after one common objective. And that is the trade show exhibit manager that's looking for resources. Yeah, and so you really brought, 
you really connected a lot of people together with the specific goal of wildly expanding your audience to put all of your services in front of exactly the people who would stand to benefit from them. Yes. A rising tide lifts all boats. Yeah, I love that. There's a word, um, there's a word that's, uh, that I recently became aware of that I love, and I think it was in the context of um, all of these uh, you know, microbreweries and how they're all surviving, and it's a term called co coopetition. So oh, yeah. just yeah, so just like you were saying, you know, yeah, you might you might have audiences that overlap a little bit, but if you can each find the thing that you're unique at, and then put those put those elements together, everybody wins. Well, one person Create can't really do everything that's going to be necessary there. Right. Mm -hmm. so like a, yeah. a quick example, when I was doing magic full time, I would sometimes get these gigs that had like a thousand people at them, and they hired me to walk around and do table magic. That's a okay. lot of people for one guy to cover doing it is. five, 10 minutes at each table. So why not bring in somebody else, pay them some of the money and uh -huh. cover more ground? It's, it's not about competition. It's about collaboration. And yeah, life. absolutely. Um, so with you being, okay, magician, um, connector, uh, event, convention launcher in really unique ways and just all of these aspects of you, I'm just curious, I'd love for you to leave us with um, some thoughts about what drives your success, what drives you to keep going and to keep doing the stuff that, that you're doing. I will. The one thing that drives me is results. Okay. I had a more. friend that used to say, um, um, you're responsible for the activity, but you're not responsible for the results. And I get that, that Absolutely. you do it and then the universe kind of takes over. But mm -hmm. I get jazzed when something actually happens. Of course. And it's a challenge these days because, you know, we do these social media posts and you post and post and post and Mark mm -hmm. Zuckerberg kind of suppresses you because he's got a lot of people. To <laughs> All the algorithms. With. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a, you can't, it can't be seen by everybody because everybody can't be seen by everybody. That's a lot of people. Right. So when something actually happens, like if I do a post and all of a sudden somebody inquires and then all of a sudden a sale comes in for a booth, that's exciting to me that all of a sudden I, sp I feel the lineage because, you know, you you, you push something forward, you expect it to move, right? Of course. With the internet, it doesn't necessarily happen that way. You put stuff out and then crickets, you know? Yeah, you're kind of like, okay, what's well, going to happen now? Mm -hmm. That's what drives me. It actually pulls me forward. It inspires me when all of a sudden okay. I get some kind of results. You know, when, when, when you someone see sees this video and they actually comment on it or something and say, hey, how can I get a hold of that Leah person? I could go, <laughs> Let me connect you. Yeah, absolutely. And then that gives you the, when you get the engagement, from somebody or you get the result, then you get to be, you get another way to be exactly who you are in a way that's completely aligned with your purpose yeah. as a connector. That's what jazzes me. Absolutely. Well, that is wonderful. I'm so glad to learn a little more about you today. Magic Brad. Yeah. It's clear that you do have some magical powers about the way that you conduct your business and the, and the things that you put out into the world. And I think we all look forward to hearing more in the coming months about the projects that you're working on and, uh, and the results that you're getting. Thank you so much for the interview today. My pleasure. And I'm looking forward to more. Awesome. Well, we're going to sign off for today with the Synergy Cafe. Once again, this is Leah Murta, guest host, and I look forward to checking in again soon, everybody. Take care.